Okay, um, I am Chastity White Rose, and I believe I am live on Twitch as well as the Wisdom app right now. And I'm streaming myself with both apps at the moment because the topic that I have today to talk about is very important. And that's why I have turned my phone on Do Not Disturb. Hopefully I did that right. And also I am doing this while my mom is out of the apartment because I live with my mom and she she will interrupt if um if she was home she will interrupt she it, it, you know she doesn't always know what i'm doing and so like when i'm dancing she'll she'll call because he hears the fourth she thought i was having a stroke or a seizure or something that's just an example my mom's like well what, what's going on so the topic that i have today to talk about is i am gay but now the reason i have chosen this topic um, I am gay, but is because it's part of my series titled I am transgender, but now in talking about why I'm gay, but, and then I talk about all the things to challenge the misconceptions because the purpose of my series, I am transgender, but is to dispel the stereotypes. The purpose of my, of my show that I'm starting is to get rid of stereotypes because people think transgender people are all uh that a certain way or they think gay people are all a certain way and i'm tired of being stereotyped because you know black people and, and white people don't like being stereotyped um people of any identity don't like being stereotyped you know you know and so here's what what i want to explain is how i am gay but it doesn't mean what you think it means. Because when somebody says they're gay, there are a lot of misconceptions that people have. When you If somebody says they're gay, or, or you suspect that somebody might be gay, you think, well, this person has anal sex, and they probably have AIDS, and people think that all gay people have gay sex. They think they have anal sex, and that's what a lot of people think. That's what I used to think, too. Until I realized that I am gay, but I'm a celibate. And over the past few years, after coming out as transgender and processing all that, I have been wondering about something else. That I've actually been wondering about this since my teen years, in fact. But I have never gone public with this until now. So the thing is, I've realized in the last few years that as I healed from uh, sexual trauma, because I was sexually abused as a child by my older brother, I realized that I was, uh, I was horribly afraid of men. You know, I'm horribly afraid of men, horribly afraid of penises. And that's something that anybody who reads my books that I've published will know, because I did my series Chandler's Honesty, The Truth About a Child's Past Told Straight from the Horse's Mouth which is available on Amazon and Audible and stuff like that. So I've already talked about this in my pub published books, how I'm afraid of men and I'm afraid of, of penises. So this is true. So the thing is, I am afraid of men and I'm scared of penises, which is what happens when you're sodomized as a two-year-old. You, you uh, develop a fear of penises because they are terrifying. They're terrifying when they when they're stuck in you and you don't want them to be because that is an act of violence and i want to make clear that you know uh trying to have sex with a child regardless of of what type of sexual activity that that is that is wrong that is wrong because that is not consensual okay so i was sexually abused and this colors my views today as a 36 year old adult it's 34 years later and Although I'm also scared of men, I also have become more increasingly aware that I'm also attracted to men at the same time. And this is where it gets confusing because when I was in the Navy and I was, I, you know, I was, that's a whole other podcast right there. When I was in the Navy and had to shower uh, with all these other men uh, in the same place, I was terrified, like I was absolutely horrified. And the thing to understand is that two things in my mind were going on. Because on the one hand, I'm like terrified, like I'm naked in a room full of men. They're gonna rape me. What are they gonna do to me? Because I'm afraid of men, 
obviously, and for good reason. When you're sexually abused, that tends to happen. So I've been afraid of women. I mean, I'm afraid, a bit afraid of, well, I've been, no, I mean, I've been afraid of men more than women. I'm afraid of certain women because some women have proven themselves not to be trustworthy, but always been afraid of the sight of men. And that's something that I'm slowly working to overcome. At the same time, there was something else that's always gone on. Something else that has gone on at the same time. And that is that I noticed back when I was a teenager that I could look at myself in the mirror and I could get an erection at the sight of myself in the mirror. And this is something that has, this, it was true for a long time up until the orchiectomy where I had my testicles removed. And this, this is important to understand because I realized that on the one hand, I was afraid of my own body, you know, gro growing up and experiencing male puberty, I did not want to look like a man. I really did not want to look like a man. Part of that was due to fear of looking like, um, like, you know, my brother or my father. And I, I didn't want to be reminded of evil men. So if you've been sexually abused or otherwise abused by men, then you don't want to look like a man because then every time you see yourself, it reminds you of them. So that's a horrible traumatic experience. That's hard, that's, that's hard to deal with. And but there was more going on to it than that, because there was also gender dysphoria. There was also the fact that I didn't feel like a man. And I am, in fact, a trans woman and I don't pass as a woman. But the thing is, I was experiencing gender dysphoria and I knew I was experiencing gender dysphoria. I think I first knew it the day I was screaming at God for not making me a girl. I was at the creek and I was screaming, God, why didn't you make me a girl? Because it would be so much better. And I remember, I remember very clearly that there was this girl at a church that I thought I had a crush on. I thought I had a crush on this girl. But one of the first things that crossed my mind was I wish I had been born a girl. And I specifically remember wishing I had been born a girl so that I could be friends with this girl. Because I knew that me being a, me being a man and her being a woman would she would t misinterpret that that i had a sexual interest in her and obviously that was not the case because if you if you're wishing that you could be the same gender as someone just so that or the same sex as someone you know um then just so that you can be friends with them without them thinking you're some kind of rapist that's going to rape them and the reason that I thought that, and I understand now why I thought that, and that was because since I was afraid of men, I was afraid that men were going to rape me. I, th I thought, well, that's pretty much what, um, what most women think, you know, and that's probably true. I mean, obviously men have raped a lot of women. That's something that's well known. So I feel that my fear about men raping me is similar to the fears that a biological uh, a cis woman would experience. They would also be afraid of men, particularly if they have had traumatic experiences where they've been raped by a man. But it's different when you are biologically a man. When you go through male puberty, you look sort of like a man and you're so afraid of men, but then you look like one. That's horribly traumatic. But at the same time as all this fear and hating my body, there was also something else going on. There was also the fact that I also liked my body at the same time. It's so confusing. It's really confusing. And I hope that anyone li listening to this understands the importance of this topic. And the reason that I'm sharing this is because it's very important to understand that being transgender and being gay are not the same thing, but I believe myself to be sort of both. And I believe that knowing wh where one can connect to the other is important. I'm just being honest here. And I, I always say honesty is the best policy, but this is hard to talk about. So as I could... Um, as I remember, since my teen years and my early adulthood, what would happen is 
I would take off my clothes to get in the shower. And when I would see myself naked, it was traumatic for me to see myself naked. It was traumatic for me to see my own penis. But when I would focus on my upper body, when I would focus on, you know, the muscles of my arms, I was always proud of my strong arms, my strong arm muscles. I, I like muscles. I, I like muscles. I like being strong myself. I'm attracted to muscles. I love muscles. And I, I know this too, because I remember when I got to see a draft horse up close and you could see its strong muscles because they're, it's bulging muscles, like horses are strong. And whether I see strong men or strong women or strong horses and I see their muscles just shows how strong they are. I really like muscles. That's just a fact of me. I like muscles. Um, I, I, I think it's muscles are beautiful, but muscles are, are strong. I love muscles. That's just a fact. So as I flexed in the mirror and would notice my strong arm muscles, I started noticing that I was getting an erection. And I'm like, wait, what? But then because I was getting an erection, that fear of my penis and the, the flashbacks, the memory, the trauma of being raped by my brother when I was two years old flooded back. It's, it's hard. It's really, really hard to deal with that. And so I, you know, I liked my muscles. I liked aspects of my body. I was attracted to my own body. Um, as well as that of other men with muscles, but also afraid because see the more, seeing strong muscles makes me think something is awesome but at the same time seeing strong men also is traumatic because they're strong meaning they also have the potential to hurt me so i fear men with muscles at the same time as i think you know muscular men and women look good and if you have if you've ever seen any bo female bodybuilders they look really good i like muscles i like strong muscles because i like actual strength but i also like you know the defin muscle definition when somebody does work out and and it's sort of like um as an example of how i like muscles um if you've ever been on facebook or instagram or tiktok you may have know of this user uh joshua buchanan joshua buchanan he's a black man and he has a lot of muscles. I believe he's like, he works out a lot. I think he's like a professional trainer, but he also does these, um, these, <laughs> these videos where he's like, you know, folding a sheet or, or, you know, folding a shirt, whatever, or vacuuming or, or cleaning things in his apartment. But he's also showing off his muscles and how strong he is. And like, I have watched so many of Joshua Buchanan's videos. I told, I think, that guy is hot, okay? And I don't know if that's the right term or not, but I know that I'm attracted to him. I just know that that's just a fact. And the way I, okay, first of all, a good way to know that you are, um, you are, you are attracted to something is you all, you, you probably need to look at what you subscribe to on, on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. And I figured it out, yeah. I, I'm gay. I'm really gay. Okay. So I have established that I'm very gay. Um, but then once I've established that I'm, that I'm, I am gay, what do I do about that? Well, nothing. Um, because first of all, I named myself chastity. When I came out as transgender, I named myself chastity. And that is because I have chosen a life of celibacy. And however attracted I might be, and it may or may not be a sexual attraction, that that is a aspect of my biology. It's the way my body responds to seeing certain things, but it doesn't mean that my soul has chosen something about that. So you may see somebody attractive and your body may respond in certain ways, but that does not mean that you're gonna have a sexual relationship with them. First of all, they're probably already married or in a relationship with someone else. So now I know what I'm attracted to. I know what I have a, a psychological reaction to and, and formerly biological reaction. And what's, what's great is that since I had the um, orchiectomy, which I had to do for reasons of pain, I had, I had testicular torsion. It was really bad. So I was in 
excruciating pain for two years until finally got someone to do an orchiectomy and I had both testicles removed. And I have been happier ever since. I am a eunuch, um, and, but I am also a trans woman. And so what's happened now is that my body is aligned with what I feel inside. I feel that I have the mind closer to that of a woman. But I also could be seen as sort of a, a gay man who's attracted to other biological males. That's true. So that's just, that's just a fact about me. But beyond that, I have chosen a life of celibacy, but I also, I get very frustrated because I like the concept of something like a spouse. I like the concept of something like a marriage, but without sex. And I'm not the only person to say that. Now, for years, I have told people that I am asexual and that I don't experience sexual attraction. The thing is, I may still be asexual with occasional gay moments. I like to think of myself as both. And the thing is, because I'm asexual because I don't actually desire to have sex with someone. And yet, whatever, whatever it is, whether it's, whether it's hormones, chromosomes, or what way my brain is structured, my body and my mind do have certain reactions to certain things that I see, and that's just a fact. And I also know that um, I'm attracted to other trans women, which it only makes sense. It, it totally makes sense because I'm attracted to um, biological males, but I also like other trans women because psychologically and emotionally, they're, they're so much like me. I like other trans women and I feel like the ideal spouse for me, if I was to have such a person in my life, would be another trans woman. That would be that would be what I would prefer, you know, to have a sexless marriage with another trans woman where we just are life partners. That's what I want. Um, so that's that's basically sums up how I feel about the matter. But my mission in life realizing that I am transgender, but also realizing that I am kind of gay. I feel like one of my roles as a podcaster, one of my roles as a person who, um, you know, who wants to educate people. I, I, I wish to educate people on LGBT topics. And um, because I do wish to educate people, I feel like I... I've processed this for a long time and I've wanted to talk about it. I wanted to do a podcast about this topic for some time, but I've been afraid to. I've been afraid to because I know how people on the internet react. I know how people react. But the reason that I finally decided to do this is because I realize now that I actually have people who do read what I, I post. People do listen, people do read. And Occasionally, people will come across my content, and I have received positive emails from some people about my podcast that I've done. And so, even though there's going to be some very strange reactions to this episode, I very much wanted to record this because there, throughout my teen years, I was asking the... Um, question and I you know I get on Google and I would search on the internet am I gay and I cannot tell you how many YouTube videos how many uh, articles how many things on the on the internet I read and how many I listened to about am I gay signs that you might be gay and I got to tell you the first sign that you might be gay is if you are typing into an internet search engine the question am I gay yeah you're probably gay just want to put that out there um and it took me, I, I realized something was weird, but it took me years to be able to finally uh, process that, to finally realize that, yeah, I'm gay, but that doesn't define my choices as an adult person and what I do with my body now, or rather what I don't do with my body. Because I am, I am a celibate. I am a single virgin. Um, and that's the way it's going to stay. That's the way it's going to stay. 
But as you might imagine, this did kind of mess me up when it came to Christianity. So in my teen years and early 20s, I was really struggling with this because I was wondering, well, am I gay? Am I transgender? I was kind of wondering about this in my late teens. I remember some of the things I was looking up when I was 19, you know, before the Navy even. I was typing in, am I, am I, gay, am I gay? Am I transgender? And I really suspected that something was going on. I, I, I had a feeling that I wasn't cis straight, but I didn't really know all the terminology back then. So I was searching, am I gay? And I was finding some very interesting content, especially like um, one, what was the, what was that name of that person? Um, Zinya Jones, that was their name. And they were a very interesting YouTuber. And I, and I watched a lot of their videos, but realizing that I might be gay or I might be transgender, I had this weird feeling that people were going to judge me at church. And I was afraid to really tell people about this. I was totally afraid to tell people about this um, because I I went to church with my mom at the time and I, I attended church for a few more years until I finally stopped when I was about the age of 25. Like, I quit going to church. Um, I had a bad experience at a church, and I and I started working for High V about that time too. And so I tried to put things out of my mind. And it would be it wasn't until I was 31 years old that I came out as transgender. But recently, what helped me so much, as a person who um, kind of lost my faith, um, and I became an atheist for 10 years, I what really helped me is that. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I listen to um, so many books. I, I, I remember I bought several audiobooks uh, by gay Christians, and I found that there are Christians who they are they identify as Christians, but they also realize that they're gay. Matthew Vines, Justin Lee, and there's others, but I recommend the book um, Torn, written by Justin Lee. And I recommend the book, God and the Gay Christian, written by Matthew Vines. Now, I haven't read the books. I listened to the audiobooks, but I also bought uh, copies of the books, too, to loan to other people and give to other people. That's a very important thing. And so, because I, I want the information in those books to get out to people, because I feel like... Um, I feel like Justin Lee's book really helped me. Listening to that audiobook, Torn, it really helped me because he went through so many things. And I realized that even if I am gay and I'm most certainly transgender, that doesn't mean that God hates me. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, um, that God's going to send me to hell because I don't really believe that way anymore. And I do believe in God. But at the same time, it's a different concept. It's more of a, a universal force. It's more of an intelligence, but not necessarily the same as the view promoted by mainstream Christianity. I don't believe in a man in the sky who's getting all bent out of shape and pissed off about every time somebody um, ha has some sort of sexual activity that God doesn't like. And like, oh, oh. No, oh, dang, those homosexuals are at it again. Got to send them to hell. You know, like that was the image of God that so many mainstream Christians promote. And of course, the Westboro Baptist Church. Many people have heard of the Westboro Baptist Church. But even though even other mainstream Protestant churches are promoting this message that, oh, well, if you're gay, you go to hell. And then there's some that are like, well, if you're gay, um, you go to hell if you choose to act on your homosexual desire. So if you do any homosexual activity, then you go to hell, but you don't go to hell for just experiencing same-sex attraction. So first of all, the Catholics and the Protestants and all the different denominations thereof, they all disagree. They have different disagreements on what happens to gay people. Some think God loves everyone. Some think, well, God really, God hates some people. Um, and, and especially the gays, you know, so I grew up hearing a variety of mixed messages. And so 
like many of you, I have seen a lot of hate on the internet regarding gay people. There's a lot of people who hate gay people, and part of it is because of what they're taught in their churches. Part of it's about certain Bible passages, which is why I would highly do recommend Torn by Justin Lee or God of the Gay Christian by Matthew Vines. And I'm promoting these books because I believe these books will save lives. In fact, I would say it's more important to read these books than it is for you to read my own book, my you know my series of books, Chandler's Honesty. Um, yeah, you should totally read my books, but I recommend first, absolutely, I would recommend uh, Torn by Justin Lee. But then after that, um, God and the Gay Christian. But I don't care which order you read these books in, as long as you read them or listen to the audiobooks. And also, since I am live streaming, and I am recording this, and since there's going to be people who are curious about this, but they may be in a position where they can't they can't buy a book or they can't they can't um, they can't buy an audiobook. In fact, there may be somebody someday who listens to this. There might be some, let's say there's somebody who's a teenager, okay? And they are in, you know, they are living with parents who really hate gay people or really hate LGBT people in general. And they want to know more. They want to know, um, can God still love me even if I'm gay? Or if, can God still love me if I'm transgender? There's going to be those kids. There's going to be those teenagers who wonder, does God still love me? And, and also, what do I do? You know, it, what, what, how, how does this affect my life? And I got to tell you that as a 36 year old adult, I'm still struggling of how, what this means for me. What does this mean for my life? How will it affect, affect my relationships? I've already, I've already lost people in my life due to being transgender and, and, and gay and stuff like that. I've already, I've already lost people in my life, but I still have my mother and my mother loves me. So shout out to my mother if she ever listened to this. I do love my mother and don't get the wrong idea just because um, I try to make sure that um, that I do my most important podcast when my mom is out of the house isn't because I don't love my mom, nor is it because I'm afraid of her to hear what I have to say because I absolutely have important things to say and I know that she loves me and I know that she is my ally. My mom isn't allied to the LGBT community. She absolutely is. And this is stuff that we talk about regularly, my mother and I, and we want to work on a book together about the transgender topic. We don't know what the title of the book is going to be. We don't know exactly how we're going to go about it, but we want to cover, we want a comprehensive book to really cover the transgender issues and 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 talk about the things that may not have really been covered you know what i mean because there are there are a lot of transgender books on the market there's a lot of people writing books about them being transgender and there's books about there's a lot of books about being transgender but at the same time there's a lot of misinformation there's so much misinformation that people are spreading about you know thinking that um you know well, there, there are people who believe, that, oh, trans women want to go in women's bathrooms so that they can rape women. And first of all, men have raped women throughout history, and they don't need to go into a women's bathroom to do it. Just putting that out there. And I believe that the vast majority of trans women want to go in whichever bathroom they'll be allowed to because they got a peer poop. And that's why people go into bathrooms. I'm all for gender neutral bathrooms. And I use the men's restroom to this day if if a gender neutral bathroom is not available because it's the safest option for me. Because nobody can try to question me about whether I belong in the men's restroom. Um but that so that being said, um the transgender topic as of this moment, because this is the year 2023. There are so many states passing anti-transgender laws. There are bills trying to ban gender-affirming care, some for people under the age of 18, some banning them even for adults. And I live in Missouri, and you know what, ha what has happened in Missouri, what almost happened, 
could have resulted in a total ban of people getting their hormones, uh, which could have affected me. And if that does happen to me, I will still live, of course. But I want people to know that estrogen has made the biggest difference in my life. It's made me happier. It's made me more social. It's really changed how I feel about myself because the mental changes as well as the physical changes make me more comfortable in my own body. So I believe that definitely adults, especially people like me in our 30s, we know what we want. We, want, we, we have the right to decide what we want to do with our bodies, what surgery or, or hormones we want to take if we choose to do that. So I'm all for adults transitioning. Children transitioning, I think, is good idea in some cases, and I think that's up to the those children to decide along with their parents and doctors. I don't want gender affirming care of any sort to be banned for anyone, um, even if they are a teenager and they're not uh, 18 yet. I don't want it banned. I think it should be a case by case basis, and I've said that for past few years, honestly. And I have my opinions on trans women in sports, you know, transgender people in sports, and I've shared that elsewhere, but briefly I'll just state that we need to have separate transgender sports leagues. I would love, to, I would watch sports. If we had all the transgender people in their own sports league, I would so totally watch sports because I would be interested in knowing the results. I would totally love to know the results of that. And I'm not someone who watches sports, but I would totally watch that. I would I would at least follow the news related to that. But anyway, I don't want to go on too long. I don't really want to go on too long about this. But I do hope that people understand the importance of why I had to do this episode. The purpose of this episode is for me to explain my history about how it's affected my relationship with God, how it's affected my life, and as it relates to the trauma I experienced when I was a child. And everybody has to figure out their own journey. They have to figure out their own journey. And the thing about this is that there is already a tendency to sexualize, to over-sexualize uh, transgender people. And there are some people that they, uh, when they find out about transgender people, they get exceptionally interested in their bodies and they want to know what's in their pants. They want to know what genitals they have. It's creepy. And this even happened to me at work. There, there was a guy who would ask me while I'm, while I'm shopping, um, I wasn't working that day, but he, but several times this happened where he's asking me, are you going to get your pussy cut open? This was an employee. At the high V grocery store, while I'm checking out, um, you know, just buy, buying groceries, and he's done this a few times. It's horrible. Don't go around asking people, "Hey, are you gonna get, are you gonna get your your pussy cut open?" Don't do that. Don't do that. That that's rude. You have no business asking about people's genitals, especially in public. That is unacceptable behavior, and. I, I told I told HR and she's like, well, you know, he's brain damaged. He doesn't know what he's saying. I'm like, um, yeah, but you know, this behavior still needs to stop. Fortunately, I don't work at Hy-Vee anymore. That's not that's not the only reason. There were many other problems, but that's not what this that's not what today's podcast is about. Today's podcast is how I am gay, but I am not a homosexual. I am a homo non-sexual. I am a celibate. My name is Chastity White Rose, and I am the vegan virgin. And I want to make that clear. I am not a sexual object. I'm not, I'm not somebody who you should ask about my genitals. I'm not that, I'm not a, that person. And some transgender people are um some people some transgender people are sexual and they have their own um sexual orientation some of them are straight gay bisexual asexual and then people like me are um you know are gay sometimes with the attraction i experience but choosing to live an, a celibate and asexual life so Whatever you've heard about the gay agenda or or the gay lifestyle does not apply to me. 
Yeah, it doesn't. And I do hope that that message gets across. I really hope that that message gets across. I hope I communicated this well. I believe that's all I have to say on this topic for now. But if I do receive questions or comments as a result of this episode, I may have to do a part two. So anyway, um, I guess it's time to end this stream. But I guess before I go, I shall close out this stream in the way I usually do. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes!